Hi. In the previous video, we have built this circuitry. And I showed you that if we use an adjustable voltage regulator together with a single diode after our power supply, which comes from a variac, we can drive this circuitry and we will achieve a satisfactory results from our single MOSFET solid state test record. This circuitry is a self oscillating uh, circuitry and it doesn't have a gate driver. So first I will show you the previous performance and then I will make some changes in the circuit so that we can achieve better results. So now I apply approximately 90 volts and I change the knob of the voltage regulator. Okay, so these are respectable uh, discharges. The length of them are approximately 15 centimeter. Um, the problem is that these discharges happen with a frequency of 50 hertz. So every, every cycle we have one of those discharges. And because they happen so often, then the switch will get very hot very quickly. So what I'm going to do today is to change the circuitry a little bit and also create a kind of interrupt in front of the input voltage so that we don't get 50 times per second of these discharges. Instead, maybe we get three discharges per second. And in that case, I can be sure that the switch will not overheat and will not burn because of thermal runaway. If I can achieve that, then I can increase the input voltage to maybe 150, 160 volts. And in that case, we can achieve much longer discharges. All right, so first I made some small amount of change in this circuitry. So instead of this MOSFET, I'm going to use this IGBT. The MOSFET will also work. This IGBT works slightly better. Instead of four turns on primary, I'm going to use five turns on primary. Four turns will also work. Instead of 130 picofarad and 30 ohm snubber, I'm going to use one nanofarad 13 ohm snubber. Okay, so this is the change of the circuitry. And then we have to also implement the interrupt circuitry, which I will show you. Okay, so I have changed the snubber and also the switch. For the interrupt circuit, I'm going to use a wall adapter. This is a 12 volt wall adapter. You can also use a battery instead of this. This one has a transformer inside it and it has sufficient insulation. So you need that amount of insulation. Here I have a relay. These two terminals connected to the coil of the relay. So if I send a pulse to this, a connection is established between these two terminals. And if I apply zero volt here, that connection is interrupted. So to drive the relay, I use this motor driver, L298N. So the adapter powers this driver. The driver has an inbuilt five volt pin. So that one, I use it to power the Arduino. Arduino sends the pulses of 11 millisecond on, 307 millisecond off to this motor driver and that one drives the relay. So in that case, we produce three pulses every second approximately. Okay, so I will assemble this and we see how it performs. All right, so the relay is placed in series with the input voltage and the wall adapter is here. So ground of it is connected to the ground of Arduino and also ground of the motor driver. And if I connect these two together, basically this one turns on and the relay will start to work. Okay, so now I will show you the performance.
So now I applied 170 volts and we have respectable discharge length, maybe approximately 35 centimeter, which is a good achievement. If I change the knob of the voltage regulator, then the discharges will be more branched. But if I change the knob all the way to the full range, then the discharges are more straight. Okay, so I now lower the voltage. This is now 150 volts. All right, so now I change the on period to 22 millisecond. The off period is still 307 millisecond. Let's see how this change impact the output. Apply now 160 volts. The discharges are certainly more stronger, but then they become several branches. They are not fully straight one streamer. 